The Tamron 150-600mm G2 lens has long been a great seller and is rated as one of the best budget telephoto lenses you can buy. In this video I get my hands on this beast of a lens and I'm going to see how it performs when I team it up together with my Nikon D850. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Before I get started, just a little disclaimer. Tamron Australia were kind enough to lend me this lens for two weeks to test out and review. I'm not getting paid by Tamron in any way and any opinion of this lens, good or bad, is my own. Now this review is actually going to be in two parts. Part one of this review will be basically using this lens and I'll be out visiting some of my favourite bird and wildlife locations here in Australia. In part two, I'll be back in the studio and I'll be going through the shots that I've taken with this lens and having a look in depth at the type of results I've got. I'll be telling you what I thought and importantly, would I buy it? So enough talking, let's go out, let's have some fun with this lens, see what it can do. Just a quick bit of tech info on the lens. This is the Nikon F mount version, it weighs just near two kilos. At 150 millimeters, good morning. At 150 millimeters, we got F5. At 600 millimeters, we got F6.3. The minimum focus distance on the lens is 2.2 meters. And on the front, you've got a 95 millimeter filter thread. Today on the D850 I'm shooting in manual mode which gives me greater flexibility over my aperture and shutter settings and I've left my ISO on an auto ranging from 100 to 2000. In part two of this review you'll see the settings I used in each shot I took. Now one thing I firstly noticed was how smooth the lens went on the F mount on the D850. Really nice buttery smooth fit. When it comes to the settings on the side of the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter G2 lens, we've got our button at the top that says full and you've also got another setting where you can have a focus limit between 2.2 meters and 10 meters. I leave that on full. I think a lot of people that probably use this lens would probably do the same. Underneath that, I've got my choice between autofocus and manual focus. I'm gonna leave that on autofocus. If I do need to do a bit of manual focusing, it's very easy to adjust on the lens. Underneath that, we've got our VC control, and that stands for vibration compensation. That is basically Tamron's version of image stabilization. And I leave that to on. That gives me up to four and a half stops of image stabilization on the lens. Underneath that, we have our different modes of vibration compensation. Today, I'm leaving it on mode one. That is predominantly the mode that most people use. For the other modes, I'll just leave you a link in the description below. So already I can see sharp results from this lens when I crop in on some of the shots I've taken with the 45 megapixel D850. Loving this 600mm on the long end and really lets me get close to the action and birds faces. So the focusing is silent and very smooth, but I have noticed it does hunt a little on the long end when I'm using group area autofocus which is set to my AF on button. Not drastically though, and I'm still getting the shots I want. Just got these two ospreys sitting up in their nest. I always drop in and say hello to them every now and again. Beautiful birds, um, such amazing hunters. There's not much action. I had them flying in before, which was kind of cool. So. I'll see how those shots turn out. I'm just going to do a comparison between the 600 and 400 mil. Normally I'd have my Nikon 80 to 400 mil lens, so this is what it would be like at 400 mil, and this is at 600. I'm 
I mean, I know this lens weighs uh, just near two kilos, but it feels really good in the hand. It's really well balanced with the Nikon D850 because the D850 isn't really the lightest camera. Um, giving me a sturdy platform, you know, it doesn't feel too light where, you know, when I've got that vibration control on and I'm getting these shots, it just feels like I've got that anchor point. And I mean, you wouldn't want to be doing this all day. Obviously you want to basically use something like a, uh, a monopond or a tripod or a gimbal. But in this case where I'm not parked too far away, I'm just walking along this boardwalk here and just firing off some shots of the birds. One thing I really am liking about this lens is the tripod collar that comes with it. It's actually got an Arca Swiss mount underneath and you've got two quarter 20 threads. Um, this comes in really handy for a variation of tripods or gimbals or monopods that you might be using. In this case, I've got my shoulder strap, just put it straight into one of these quarter 20s, works a treat. Just some crimson rosellas here. Oh, these guys are just having a fight. <laughs> doing a little bit of b-roll the one thing I've been very impressed with the lens is the vibration compensation is just fantastic when you're doing b-roll and I just can't believe the results I'm getting a lot of the b-roll you're seeing is all handheld sometimes on the long end at 600 mil you know and I'm cropping in I've got a 1.5 crop on that too which is giving me 900 mil yet I mean it is a little bit shaky but not as much as it is without it. Well guys, that brings us to the end of part one on the review of the Tamron 150mm to 600mm G2 lens. In all honesty, I've had so much fun with this lens today. Now stay tuned next week where I'll be going into part two on the lens i'll be back in the studio having a look at the shots i got you'll also see the settings that i've used on those shots as i always say never stop creating and i'll see you next time